we have a, um, a terrible workload for tonight, so that's no news. But the first session is for Lawrence Walling. He will uh, give us an uh, introduction in the new way of collaboration, virtual collaboration. Uh, Monique and Kevin will introduce Lawrence. Lawrence. Don't you? Yeah. yeah, come on. Today we are introducing Lawrence Waring. He was born at the June the 7th, 1983. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 um, he uh, did um, a study at uh, Delft University of Technology. He did technical um, policy analysis. Mm. Uh, thank you. Technical policy analysis. And um, he loves social impact. He is fascinated with that. And he loves innovative solutions to organize society less complex. He also had a lot of working experience, we saw. A lot. <laughs> A whole lot of working experience, uh, some of which are uh, member as a member of the supervisory board at IRCVO and at NOC. Uh, he also worked in the care sector at Zeggenschap and as a partner innovator of Olivus. He also had has two startups and one recent, which I believe, in, uh, which is called Partup, which is a platform that helps. Uh, people organize a project with people they like to work with, uh, which is based on yeah, self-organization because teamwork nowadays is too complex. I'm sorry, Ben. Thanks very much. Okay, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> what Google can do. Um, well, 33 years old. And uh, uh, two years ago, I uh, decided to uh, quit working in organizations. I did no longer want to have a job. I wanted to be free to choose my subjects where I want to work on. And I wanted to choose who, whom I want to work with. Because I felt that in the organizations I was working, the structure of the organization always dictates who you have to work with. So you never end up in teams with a feeling of, wow, those people are great, I, wanna, I love working with them, it's a great subject, um, it's always something, ah, maybe you can do it, you can do it, and, and people top down, appointing people into teams, getting, uh, and the result is a team with yeah, low motivation, with low energy. Um, you've not had so much working experience in organizations, I suppose, but I noticed a large difference when I was working in a team with friends, or in a team with freelancers, and we had a common subject, and we, we, we decided we want to build this, or we want to plan a great event, or do something great with friends. There was energy all over the place. And we, did, we didn't stop working at five o'clock. We didn't uh, care about uh, if somebody did a little bit more or a little bit less. We just went and everybody took his natural role. But when I was working inside organizations, it always felt really slow and bureaucratic to work with, uh, with people. So I decided for the rest of my life, I don't want to work in organizations anymore. That's not efficient. I want to be free to choose who I want to work with and where I want to work. So I decided to start uh, organizing my life without an organization. And I found other people uh, that also wanted to work jobless. Just work in temporary projects, for temporary teams with other freelancers teams where the relationships are horizontal instead of vertical. Um, so I don't want to be a boss, I don't want to have a boss, I want to work with partners uh, that feel equal to each other. And that was my, I, my dream. My dream is a world where everybody can be free to organize himself uh, with the talents he or she has together with other people um, in temporary teams for temporary jobs. Why temporary? That's really important. Because when it's not temporary and you start uh, worrying about the long term, that's when the, 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 the organizational thinking uh, comes in. Organizations, they tend to keep themselves 
alive all the time. So they start to do things to, to make themselves, uh, to keep themselves alive instead of just worrying about this needs to be done and when it's done, we spill up. So I want to work in teams where the end is already inside, but you can see when we achieve this result, we split up. Temporary teams. And I start calling them, we invented the name, Partups, because the word Gelegenheidscoalitie is <laughs> it's a terrible word. <laughs> and there isn't like a nice word for, 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 for a temporary team. Uh, so we, this, we came up with the word Partup. You know, that the parts go together and you know the parts uh, split up. And uh, second, um, uh, when we wanted to part up all the time, we needed a platform. We need a platform where it's easy to find teams, to create, to build teams. Because all the current collaboration software, they assume that you already have a team. If you go to Dropbox, if you go to Basecamp, if you go to uh, the Google Drive or any, anything you, you use to collaborate with a group of people, they say, yeah, you select the people you want to work with, but you, they assume that you already know who you want to work with. What we've been building, and we launched it last year, is the platform Partup.com. And at Partup, you can post your ID, and other people can join to transform your ID into a plan, into a project, and along the way, people can join the team. So it's a platform to find teams, to find team members. It's actually a, a dating site for project mm -hmm. teams. And we were missing that in the scope, in the whole broad area of collaboration software. Where is the place where you actually meet new people? And of course there's LinkedIn, and of course there's lots of marketplaces for freelancers where you can find individual freelancers. But individual, we want to have teams. So a, a team is a complex set of, of, of people together with, with, with different talents, with different strengths, with different personalities, with social clicks or not clicks. Or, and uh, that's, it's, a, it's a social process. And we were thinking, and we were still thinking, uh, how can we support that process of finding a team that fits, fits together, that fits together with people that choose for each other and people that choose the common subject so they're free um, uh, to choose each other. And they also, if somebody else chooses for your team, you can accept or reject somebody in your, into your team. So everybody is in control of who is working with who. We wanted to support that process. And that's what Partup.com is currently doing. So we launched it as an open website, open for everybody. You can just go to our site and you can see, uh, I think currently 500 projects uh, running uh, there. And over last year, uh, uh, 2000 of those projects were initiated. And we currently have 5,000 members uh, that created a profile, a little bit like the LinkedIn uh, profile on the site. And we started matching those people into uh, project teams. But then something really interesting happened and it hits us you know, this, this spring. We realized it didn't go as we expected it to go. We were matching people into teams and they, they all choose the, the common subject. They, they, they choose each other and still they didn't get into this flow that we were expected to have, to happen. So the team, the, uh, the teams that we, we were matching, um, and often it, we didn't, we weren't able to match because our database was too, uh, too small, but the teams that we were able to match, they didn't really uh, achieve high results. Yes, some did, some small ones, and of course we picked those out and put them on the social media, so people got the idea, well, this works. Truth is, it didn't really work. <laughs> Um, and we started analyzing why is that? Why is it that when we match people together that they uh, don't achieve such great results? And um, well, it, it, the, to give you the answer straight away, it was because there was safety missing. Those people didn't feel safe to work together. They didn't have a trusted environment. Uh, they didn't know each other. They, they were clear about what's behind the, the, the drivers for this person to, to join the team. <clears throat> there was no safe environment. We noticed this because of several reasons. First, we found this um, uh, really uh, interesting Google research. They researched thousands of teams. It's called Project Aristoteles from, uh, from Google. And they, they were trying to find what are the indicator, uh, what are the indicators of successful teamwork. And they found lots of things, but they said they're all, they're all really margins. They, 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 they didn't really matter. What, what matters most was Psychological, psychological safety. So the feeling that people have in the team that they feel safe. If you feel safe in the team, you can expect results. If you don't feel safe in the team, 
there was no, uh, you, you shouldn't expect any results. And that finding made me think. Uh, um, so we found it in the research that Google uh, did largely. They published it in the New York Times, and then we, uh, somebody sent it to us and said, hey, this is exactly what we need. And on the other hand, we also found it ourselves. Because for our business model, where did we get money from this platform? Of course, it costs us money to, to build it, so we need to, to earn money from it. Um, for our business model, we decided to sell the project, the, the platform, to organizations. So we had clients, we had organizations working with our platform. Uh, already last year, we had 20 organizations working with it. Currently, we have over 50 organizations that, have, that are implementing our platform internally. So you can find teammates as colleagues. You can find colleagues. If you have an ID, post it in turn uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the platform. The platform can be linked to the internet or you can send a newsletter. A newsletter. Uh, but you can, you can post it to your colleagues and only they can see it. You can, you can close it. So it's like private space. And then it's, it's like a, a dating site for, uh, for colleagues. And it also works in large organizations. Well, large is already over 100. Then you don't know all the talents uh, anymore. So it, and actually, that really worked. Because there, there was a safe environment. We saw it really working inside organizations where people already have a contract with the organization. And they were, uh, uh, they were matched with other colleagues. Maybe they didn't even know them very well, but they were contracted by the same organization. So they had a certain <laughs> level of trust and that worked far better. We also, no we also noticed many other uh, things, but this was one of our uh, main findings, the importance of having a safe environment around your project. And we also were, uh, since we the project, we called it a part of, we were looking also for a name for the safe environment, and we are now calling it a tribe. The tribe is like the group of people with yeah, common feelings, common norms, uh, values, people that uh, feel bonded to each other, um, you know, maybe because of their, their social connections, maybe because of the shared purpose of the tribe. We're going to achieve something greater together. And uh, this tribe is also something you see a lot in management literature where they say yeah, people, organizations transform into tribes. So we, <coughs> we found this word uh, tribe and we said this is actually what, what, uh, what we were missing in the beginning. We were just matching people into projects, but there wasn't a safe tribe. So we shifted within one year. And this story is different than the one I was telling last year. Last year, last year, yeah. last year we were a, 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 pl a project platform. We launched as a, a team dating uh, site, and now we're relaunching as a tribe dating platform first. You find tribes, safe environments that you can join. Environments that have their own rules. You cannot join each uh, tribe. Some have rules that you need a contract with the organization. Some have uh, uh, other acceptance rules. Some are open for everybody, but then you have a different yeah, atmosphere in there if they're open for, for everybody, different kind of tribes. So, is there uh, something I can draw there? Yeah. We're currently building tribes and helping organizations to start building this safe environment we call tribes. And within the tribe, you can say, you can start your project ID. There's someone with an ID within the tribe that says, yeah, I have this ID for a team, and he's the first part of this, uh, this team. I use this uh, pizza slice uh, form uh, because it's, it's a nice eagle form of uh, uh, presenting that there are different talents that then the next person is joining. Uh, to join, you have to uh, select one of the activities within the part -up. So the part -up is a set of activities that you're going to do and a certain goal. And to join, you have to select an uh, activity, say, hey, I want to do this. And then the first one has to accept number two into the team. Yes, I want to accept into the team. When number two is in the team, number two can also uh, um, accept number three. So then you, can, you will start having a, a form with different people, different talents joining this, uh, uh, this team. And they all come from within the tribe. And there they come from a safe environment. Um, we, we see the success of these uh, teams is much higher. So there's two steps. Step one is join the tribe. And step two is once you're in the tribe, Join the project. Yes. 
Um, I don't really get it yet because uh, what makes the tribe safe? Uh, you can call it the tribe, but what makes this the safety for it? Uh, what makes it more safe than just calling it a project? It's it's uh, um, it's, it's the feeling of those people uh, being to, being together as as a tribe or whatever they call it, yeah. um, and the feeling is also um, uh, formalized with with rules. So, for instance, if the rule is you need to have a contract with this organization. There is already a, a, a barrier to, to entry and there, uh, some, somebody else took care of the, uh, uh, the safety in some, some sense. Uh, for instance, if we start having a tribe together, you, you could all be a tribe together, we start projects in there, you can just use the platform for that. There is already a sense of safety here because you're all selected uh, to join this, this program. And that makes uh, the tribe um, was one of the aspects that gives this feeling to the tribe. There are other aspects, of course. A really important uh, one. Let's name a few important ones. Uh, so that's uh, uh, selection. How do you do that? But also, purpose. What's the purpose of this tribe? If you are a, a tribe together, what's your shared purpose? Create social innovation. Somebody else? All the answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grow as persons. Yeah, very nice. Learn something new, experience. Uh, it can be a lot of things. And uh, uh, you have a, a common feeling. Yeah, those those answers are like uh, some are more uh, the same, so it's it's fine. But sometimes you need to have in-depth sessions. Start with why uh, sessions. Uh, uh, why do we do that? And all all the time ask this why question. Uh, and sometimes it's really necessary to define this shared purpose. Why are we together? And of course you see that successful organizations also really know this. They know their their purpose. They know why they are on the on, on the earth on the planet. And if, if it's something that achieves well better lives, uh, well, that, that those are the best wise to, to commit to. And then you have this really feeling in this uh, this trap. I will come to more later. Yeah. Is there also a physical the, yeah, those tribes, I use it as a broad concept, can be a lot of things. And it can also be uh, often they have physical environments. Yeah, they have they they meet physically. Events are really important. Their 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 meeting place uh, is is important. There's all types type of things you can think of when building successful tribes. Um, yeah, think of online meeting and think of offline meeting. They always go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Now it depends on your uh, selection. So what you can say is there's like different rules, there's a selection rule, purpose rules, uh, meeting rules, how do, how do we meet, uh, um, uh, online offline, there's also like uh, co-creation rules, how do, we, uh, how do we work together, we defined a set of rules and actually what we have now is, is like a checklist, when we have a tribe we can just uh, go through the checklist and see if everything is, is, is clear um, for, for people to join and for people how to, how to work in this, uh, in this tribe. Could you moderate it or not? Some tribes are moderated. The idea behind this is self-organization. Yeah. And um, so the idea is moderation is not necessary because people initiate ideas, other people join ideas. When the idea is not good enough, it will just yeah. drop down. People won't uh, join but it. For instance, the co-creation rule. Yeah. If, if you say, oh, well, we split the co-creation rule. We don't, we don't want a rule for that. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, um, it's, sometimes it's okay, sometimes, uh, but what we see often is that then different things uh, happen. Some people start dropping IDs just like balloons. Mm -hmm. uh, other people start dropping really concrete uh, projects. Mm -hmm. um, and if there are different expectations, for instance, some people expect really projects that people want to achieve, and then someone else is just dropping a, 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 an ID, uh, and, and, and nobody reacts on the ID, and somebody else, yeah, it doesn't work. There's a project, uh, it doesn't, but for somebody else, it's not a project yet. So you need to have, for instance, one of the, the co-creation rules. How do we, we deal with this idea of 
uh, um, yeah, ideas to, to projects and, and how people can join and, and who will. So it's a kind of cookbook for uh, yeah. uh, a tribe. Yeah, how do we work together? Yeah. And then there's of course different kind of tribes. We have tribes inside organizations. You can draw that. If you have like a traditional organization, then you can have like a tribe inside an organization. You can have a tribe that's like on the border of an organization. And it, for instance, this is for instance, uh, if you form a tribe for an, uh, a certain department, or if you, for instance, all the innovation projects uh, can be an, uh, can be a tribe. So people that want to work on innovation, they can join this uh, uh, join this tribe. You can say uh, you can be a tribe within within a sign uh, organization. Um, so so within the organization, then you have a tribe where also uh, uh, people from outside can join. Usually we call this uh, like a flexible skill, so where freelancers can uh, um, can join from outside. So this is very important also for innovation projects, where people can work together with people from outside the organization, or when there isn't enough capacity inside an organization and they, they publish projects uh, in the tribe, then freelancers can react. And what happens here is uh, that you don't just publish one project, but you first allow freelancers to enter your safe tribe. So you do like kind of uh, pre-selection. And then with the pre-selected freelancers, you can uh, post your project. So you can easily onboard freelancers that you already <coughs> trust onto your project. So this is also what we create a lot for organizations. An easier way to deal with uh, freelancers, which is uh, usually quite difficult for organizations. Um, another example of what we, what we use, another example of an um, application, is that uh, you can start small, yeah? I say with one department or one certain type of projects, one, one team. Uh, but when you keep on doing this and you end up uh, having more tribes in your organization, you, somehow your whole organization starts being like a tribe. And you also have this organization say, yeah, we have no managers anymore, uh, we have no function anymore. Um, and we, we start uh, transforming our, our organization towards like a flexible workforce, towards a, a tribe. And what we also see, applications of tribes, is when there are more organizations, and they have certain uh, common goals. So we see tribes in between organizations. When these different organizations, well, Hemstall, uh, you work in uh, Wijk, and when there's a <laughs> different uh, gemeente, the zorginstelling, um, you know, all of these, these organizations working together, they together um, have a shared purpose to do something in the Wijk. You see this also in the Wijk teams uh, in the social domain. And then they, they all uh, uh, send their talents into a, uh, uh, a tribe with a common goal, and there they start initiating uh, projects together. So this is like different forms of, of applications of, uh, of tribes, and in the end, what we as an organization, uh, of course, uh, when I started building part of, I met more and more people that want to help me building the, uh, the, the platform, implementing it in organizations. So uh, even though I didn't want to work in an organization, I had to start an organization to support uh, the, the platform. <laughs> So we said, I tried to keep it as lean and mean as possible, but the, um, I started a cooperation. Uh, I only work with freelancers, so part of it is a cooperation of 20 freelancers uh, currently. Uh, but I have to admit, I am an organization as well uh, now behind uh, behind part. And we try to organize it as a total swarm, as a, a total tribe, um, and open also, so you can see our our activities, all our uh, projects, and you can join. Um, uh, the project from part of if you want to, because open is our philosophy. It's not totally open. One of the things we have uh, uh, in this, this tribe uh, is also that there are different roles. Uh, so what we uh, initiated, um, move this, is that there are like different uh, circles. So there's like the outer circle that everybody can uh, uh, can join, and then you can uh, join like an inner circle of co-creators. And there even is a, uh, an issue of the core team. So we as the founders are in the core team. In the end, we still do uh, the budget uh, decisions. But it is possible for people to uh, join the tribe, for everybody, you can just join the tribe online. Then some people we allow uh, in our co-creator uh, circle. And some of the co-creators, uh, for instance, MC say, I can say, yeah, I wanted to do a project with you for implementation. Uh, welcome, we can work together. 
Um, and then we let you in this circle. And if you work for a long time together, we start trusting you. We can even let you into our core team and you can become a member of the corporation and co-decide on budget and co-decide on everything else that needs to be done. So it's like different levels of enter, uh, entry within the tribe. Uh, so we can still have trust uh, and, and, and still have uh, some forms of, sometimes you need to hide some things and not be clear, transparent all the way. So we can close off some things for, uh, for certain layers in the, in the tribe. This is what we have now implemented into the platform. This form of, uh, uh, of different circles in the in tribes, and um, this can start these, these startups, these teams within the different circles. Question. Uh, first of all, really great idea, uh, very, uh, great platform. Uh, a question about something you said before about the temporary, uh, the temporary projects, because if you do it long term, you almost become an organization. Yep. Uh, for how long do these projects exist, and how do you monitor that that they don't, uh, yeah, become stagnant, huge? Uh, the, the, the question is open. It's you, you define it yourself within the tribe and in the co-creation rules. In, in practice, I often see projects, the, the, the best projects are sh short term, which means one month, two months, maybe even two weeks. Just do something really concrete. Uh, <coughs> define steps, have a result, like organize an event. That's one of the best examples for, for a temporary team. Just do something in small steps, then people can join, you can even fail and start over again with a new team. Don't make it too big. Yeah. Yeah. You, that's the way to look at it. Yeah, you saying earlier, more horizontal. Once you grow up, you start learning um, uh, that um, resistance uh, against the old isn't the, the best way to move forward. It's better to integrate uh, some of the old thinking and some of the new thinking uh, uh, to get something better than just say, I don't want to work in organizations anymore. So I'm just, uh, I thought I knew where you, this question was going to come. So I, um, uh, I intend to say that quite strong in the beginning, but this was the philosophy why I started this organization. I started being really strong against the old and we're now starting something new. I learned a lot. I learned that organizations are really important for the safety. I learned that these roles and this, 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 this uh, some way form of hierarchy is really important for uh, to, to create clarity in, uh, and also trust and stuff. So uh, we are adopting stuff from the old organizations. Of course, this is still fluid and, and people can and easily uh, enter a new barriers and you can work in more tribes. So there is lots of things that distinguish this from old organizations. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we learn. <laughs> As long as I like it. Um, <laughs> my, uh, uh, we had an investors round uh, le uh, last summer and the investors uh, intended that we uh, signed a contract with them that say that for the next three years uh, I will be on board. Um, and currently it feels like yeah, for three to five years I will probably be here as one of the founders of part of to, to make this. But my... my um, my way of living is I want to join tribes that give me a great feeling uh, because they, they have great purposes and, and, and nice people and I, I want to be in those tribes. And if this purpose starts going somewhere else that I want to go, I just want to exit. So always keep your exit options open. Yeah. I forgot to uh, show a little presentation that I uh, brought. Um, can you guys read this or is it too small? It's okay. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, well, I use a lot to, um, uh, in, within organizations. Uh, and, uh, take Windesheim as an organization. There's the top of the organizations and there's lots of teachers in the, uh, in the organization. And, and what we usually see is that the top of the organization is overloaded. They want to, uh, um, yeah, they have high ambitions, but they say we do not, do not use uh, utilize all our potential talent. So there's lots of talent at, uh, at Bottom's organization. They see it, but somehow they cannot use all these, these talents. There, are, there is no real-time overview of all available talents. Who's available uh, when I, I want to start something? And they say, it takes too long to form teams. Well, we have an idea. It takes months to form uh, a project team. 
So I'm just trying to point out the problems that current organizations have. Eh? The, 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 with the, 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 when I say the current organization models are, are failing, the current organization models uh, from the top of the organization. And then from the bottom of the organization, if we say the, the workforce is unable to significantly contribute, um, there are people, I feel like there are no opportunities for me to work on projects where I can make a difference. I have no overview of projects um, and I cannot uh, perform to my full potential if I'm forced into teams. I want to choose myself. So um, the, the situation is like the fast changing world places higher demands on organizations. Every organization is like facing more complexity all the time, more complex uh, from clients, from, from, uh, from students. If you take your example, they, they want more personal education. They want more digitalized uh, education. They want more flexible. Why do we still have these old classrooms? Why do we have still have the schedule? Uh, can't we make it uh, far more personal? Um, that puts a high demand on the organization to, uh, uh, to change. And somebody, somehow everybody wants that, but somehow everyone is also resisting. How do we do that? Uh, how do I fit it into my time schedule? Uh, how do we do with, uh, um, you know, with the whole system that we created? And so the, 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 there's a need for the organization to change, but somehow the top can do it and, and the bottom can, can do it. And, and that's where we put part of it. We say, hey, now we give you a platform where you can initiate all your change uh, projects and people can join projects uh, if they want to, if they feel like they have time for it. Um, and then uh, the, the platform works to, to match talents into teams, but it only works well if we explain this. Even if you apply to an organization like Windesheim, you need to have like a, 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 tribe, a set of rules around these projects for people, for people to uh, start joining it. If you say, yeah, we have this nice innovation project, but you don't give the teachers uh, free time uh, to join this uh, uh, project, they won't join these, uh, these projects. If they don't know if it's, it's allowed or not, or what's the, what's the purpose, uh, they, they also need these this, this certain rules. So th this, this thinking applies for, for within the organization from for, for all the levels all the, uh, all the time. And this is just an example of how I explain our added value to uh, organizations. And um, I do this because it's really important if you have a solution of something innovative like, like we do, you have to go really back to what's the pain from the old organizations to start selling it. I can't just say, hey, I have something new. You want to buy it? They say, it's a lovely, great idea. But there is no budget for it allocated. So you need to go back to somewhere where they have really a pain. This is what I'm trying to address here. And they say, I have the solution for this pain that you have right here. And that's this most difficult part for all, all the new startups and all new organizations to find something that really is the pain from their uh, potential clients. It also took us quite some while to make it this clear. And people say to me all the time, it should be more clear. This is our purpose, uh, defining our own uh, purpose, purpose for our track. We say what we're doing is social organizing. Uh, we increase productivity, innovation and job satisfaction by transforming organization platforms. So, Transforming organizations into platforms. That's what it is for us. Maybe for other people that's too abstract or what, what is it uh, really? But this whole platform idea of thinking, that's what we apply to, uh, to organizations. So employees can make up to talents. <coughs> Just an example where we internally, we say to each other, yeah, what do we do? Is self-organization somehow, there are different terms around that we use social organization. It's also because there's like, um, we talk about social media. Media is not the same anymore since we have social media. Everybody is now a media channel. And before there was only a few people who could do media channels. And so the, 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 this, yeah, the revolution, I can say the disruption from social media is also what we're going to do now with organizing. So before they had organizing, only a few people could organize and could run organizations. And now with social organizing, there's like a revolution. Everybody can organize. Everybody can start organizing their own teams um, and their own organizations. You don't need to have the large organizations anymore. You, you can start working in small uh, small teams. That's the idea behind what we are doing. And there's also lots of research and nice books that we use to prove that this way of uh, organization, this way of organizing actually works and brings a lot to your organization. Let's get this part a little show you this one. What we do is transform this hierarchy, we say 1.0 organizations to 2.0 organizations, where there's like an internal swarm, internal tribes. And then when they, um, this is already a large step for, uh, for organizations to start with teams, 
within the organizations where we're self-organization or self-managed teams uh, start work. Still, it's top down, uh, but the, the assignments the teams get, they can organize themselves. Uh, these type of organizations, uh, we see a lot in healthcare, for instance, uh, which they, um, the next step for them is to start turning around. So the, uh, not just uh, have these teams doing the assignments they got, they got uh, top down, but also make them initiate uh, the way uh, we're going and, and the new ideas. So we have facilitating um, top of the organization if you turn around. So there is only a little bit level of uh, um, uh, yeah, managers or formal uh, functions in place. Most people get, uh, are fluid organized. And uh, Buurtzorg is like a, a great example of this type of organization where the teams are totally free to make their own uh, agreements and, and they set in their own way of working. But still, there is some small uh, uh, overhead uh, yeah. hierarchy in place. People are still, uh, have still a contract. Uh, so they're still uh, yeah, in dienst. So a very small <coughs> core business. Yeah, yeah. And, and as, as a consultancy firm uh, where I worked in uh, a long time, uh, Alaris, uh, we also had this. Yeah, we have freedom, but we still had partnerships, uh, people owning the organization. And, and, we, and we said, yeah, if you want to, this was for us when we wanted to work even more fluid and in a more flexible way, we tried to get rid of this and we tried, tried to transform towards a, a network of, uh, of freelancers. And as you see a lot happening in the consultancy sector, that those networks of freelancers are taking over the assignments from the traditional uh, consultancy firms. So this is, uh, you shall see some of the names of clients, where I use uh, transforming a lot of organization, this is one, a transforming organization, this is where we transform organization. All the time this swarm gets more important. Four <coughs> old, uh, concept. Yeah. What, you have a kind of legal entity if you want to uh, do a large program as a consortium or something like that. Uh, yeah. Is there a legal entity or not? No. And uh, there's debate if it's necessary or not. Yeah, I wonder. But uh, <laughs> a lot of, uh, for a, a ministry, yeah. uh, probably uh, will say no. You can get a contract if you are not a legal entity. Yeah. So then, the, 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 even the, the, the small forms of legal entities, the stichting and the corporaties, they all have these boards. So they all yeah. have some this somehow in place. And the, the question is, do you need it? If you start organizing like this, do you need a legal entity, or do you want to get rid of this legal entity yeah. uh, just because it's you don't want it, no. <laughs> but something you need it for contracting. So, mm. yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. This is like a, a large experiment for many freelancers currently working together. Can we organize ourselves without a common contract? And um, one of the uh, organizations we use as an uh, inspiring example is uh, um, uh, so it's Inspiral. It's, it's called Inspiral. In um, it's an organization in New Zealand. And they're totally organized like this, but they, uh, I don't know if they have in the, all of the same forms that they use in, use in New Zealand. But this is one of the international organizations that we are heading, looking at, If uh, saying this is an example where we are heading as an organization. It's a totally fluent way of organizing. <coughs> yeah? So, in the what happens when there's a task that nobody wants to do, for example, budgeting? Because you do need to know where your money is going and what can be useful. Yeah, it's not only there, it's also here. Yeah. If you start organizing as a self-steering team, there are still activities that nobody wants to do. Yeah, yeah but it's still support. Uh, the last step you really do not Exactly. Have Here you can fall back and say, hey, okay, yeah. we still have a manager somewhere, uh, you can appoint it. Uh, there you can't. But uh, uh, you can define in your rules uh, uh, what kind of rules will apply. So this is also, I wasn't complete with the list, uh, decision making. And then there's different forms of decision making, of course. And uh, do you uh, consensus? Uh, everybody uh, agree? Uh, or do we appoint somebody? And in the end, he can make a decision and he can still force people to, uh, to do tasks that we, we don't. Um, there's also different forms in between. What we, for instance, have is a form with the 20 freelancers where uh, everybody can make a decision. Uh, if you uh, have listened to at least two people that are influenced by the decision. So the, it's like an advice process, uh, we call it. Uh, everybody is able to make decisions, so it's the speed of decision making. Not everybody has to agree to it, everybody can do it, but you need to listen at least to two people, uh, and the ones that are most influenced by the decision. You don't even have to take their, uh, what they say, uh, you don't even have to do what they say, you just need to listen, take this advice, be informed. Uh, yeah, be informed, and then take the decision, and then publish the decision. 
So this way of working also, uh, um, of course, goes hand in hand with the platform of transparency where you can publish uh, decisions. So communication and, and transparency, information transparency is really uh, um, yeah, also part of this, this way of, of tribe thinking is a, is a, is a platform. And then um, in, in the old days we say ECT platform, but we, uh, uh, you say it's a platform for information, it's a platform for communication, it's also a platform for organization. So we usually say it's an ICOT uh, platform. Um, and, and to end up a little bit, uh, then you can still have to ask some questions. But from, from Ambition's perspective, what I usually say is ICT, uh, uh, the, the I uh, uh, revolution was from Google. Google uh, gave us uh, transparency of information, and that's they're still there, uh, free all information. Uh, Facebook gave us the communication revolution and, and, and WhatsApp, and they gave us the freedom to communicate, everybody can communicate with each other. And what we now with the organization revolution, we are now heading towards everybody can organize uh, something with each other. So we see three fast uh, uh, revolutions caused by technology. Um, and maybe part of can be one of the, uh, the next one, uh, Google, Facebook, uh, part of as a uh, drive for the organizational uh, uh, revolution. <coughs> That's our uh, our dream. Okay. And how does it yeah. work out when you uh, for example, those freelancers, everybody can make a decision? What's your experience with that? Uh, it's really difficult, first of all. Uh, it's an adventure. Um, Somehow it works uh, very well, and uh, quite often um, it, it causes a lot of um, yeah, noise and, and, and uh, yeah, uh, meetings and um, people not knowing a little uncertainty. Um, so we, when trying to apply this all the time, we are faced all the time with ourselves, with our own behavior, uh, especially as founders. Because um, we have this idea and we want to go bang, we want to go that way. And then there's a team decision. And uh, if you want to make this uh, a team decision, one of the things you need to do is not as a founder, not say, yeah, we're going, we're going that way. Uh, but really look at to the team, what is the team uh, wanting to do as the next step now? So um, what happens most of the time is that we're, re we're really being faced with our own uh, behavior in the team. So we, um, uh, we're going through a lot of coaching sessions, uh, trying to have a really open culture, uh, talk about feelings, talk about uh, how we, yeah, how we uh, see behavior from each, uh, from each other, how we can change uh, behavior. So it's, it's, it's about leadership, personal leadership. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's the most of the adventure in this. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And then we're still quite young. So two years ago, we started with three of us, and last yeah. year we started. With, with, now, we're, now we're only since this summer we have this team of 20 people. Uh, so with 20, it's really, and then from this 20, there are like 10 uh, more or less full time uh, committed, and then there's 10 that, uh, on the other 10, there's maybe one or two days a week uh, with us. Um, but this for us is also new, so we we don't really have the results uh, yet. We're in, we're in the process. Yeah. Is it not work with a kind of strength-based decision making? If you say, oh, uh, Lars, you're the best in uh, strategic decision making or uh, future <coughs> insights or yeah. whatever. So I trust you with uh, your decisions in that field, in yeah. that domain. And uh, some, some, uh, someone else is working, really working on the platform, mm. uh, coding, etc., etc., etc. In, in practice, it works that way. We we could we could say we have divided it in two parts. We have divided we have a development uh, part and we have a customer co-creation part. We call it for the implementation uh, side. Mm -hmm. So we know that the decision on the platform side is usually made with people on, that are programming in platform developers, uh, um, and and of course we know uh, who you should ask. So everybody knows the different roles and the different expertises. So in practice, always the right people are. Asked by the right, by the right questions. Hello. What is the uh, We sell these tribes and we offer uh, consultancy. So the tribe is like a license model. Mm -hmm. 
the most sold is like a, a seven and a half thousand euros a year model for an organization uh, to have five uh, of those tribes um, sold it about 30 times or something and um, and next to the license model for that is of course a yearly contracting uh, uh, model we have this um, uh, implementation uh, guidance so as, as consultants we say what is what this organization need to get this tribe up and running and we used to do workshops workshops with core teams of tribes to define all these things and just writing down and this uh, would be paid for the consultancy as well so, are we making a living out of this? Or? Uh, uh, I could, if I wouldn't invest everything out of, uh, uh, into the platform again, uh, made a, uh, get a good living out of it. Now we decided to put ourselves on the lowest salary possible, um, but that's because we we invest everything in the in the technology and in the in, into the team. Uh, we are making half a million uh, omzet this year. So. Uh, yeah, if we wouldn't decide to have such a great team, uh, a large team, then we would uh, um, be able to pay ourselves quite well for this. Yeah. Um, did you copyright this idea of a, of a tribe? Because you, there's two ways to go. You could not copyright it. It'd be like, if other people want to support their own tribe, yeah. instead of using our platform, yeah. will you allow it or will you, did you copyright it? Like, you can't take this idea because it's what do you think? use for profit. <laughs> I think you did. You think what? I think you did not copyright. Why do you think I did not copyright? Because that's the easiest way to do it. The best way, I think. Because people can pick up on another one. So I think, oh, we don't have a budget for this. Well, then we can do it ourselves. Mm. I think, the, of course, we didn't copyright it. I say, of course, because we believe in this open sharing ID. It's open source. So you can download the code and you can install it and, and run your own version if you want to uh, but if you do it's stupid because next week we have an update and we will be better than your version so just keep on working with our platform <laughs> I, I say to organizations um, that ask why do we have to pay if it's open source so that's one of the reasons and um, but wh why we did that is uh, a deeper reasoning behind why why we started this we started this for ourselves, uh, because we needed a platform like this for our way of working, but also for society. We thought society needs a kind of platform like this. And if we were just missing it, if it would be there, we wouldn't start making it. It, it wasn't there. So um, uh, yeah, we, we tried to step into a niche, define and, and, and start building it. If somebody else starts doing it, we stop and we probably hop on to somebody else who's doing it. So the whole idea behind it was yeah, because of to create social impact. And you don't copyright it if you want to create social impact. Then you just want to make a business model. And um, I usually think those business models are old, uh, uh, invalid, probably even impossible for such an idea to, to copyright it. Uh, it's, it's, it's the wrong way of, uh, of thinking, in my opinion. I always say to entrepreneurs and everybody with great idea, share it. From day one, uh, I got this idea, share it. If you keep on sitting on it, there's somebody else faster with the, with the idea. If you share it, uh, you probably get uh, lots of people saying, hey, look there, and you got inspired, you got connected to other people who can help you, and the idea gets better by sharing it all the time. How does, uh, I mean, this kind of new thing, there's different way of working, and different, uh, different teams you get new products. How does this work like, legally? Do you have any issues with policies on the government that slow these projects down? Or you mean the tax services? Yeah, some taxes tax. or like laws on how this will organize your company? Um, we don't have a lot of issues with that, uh, but it's also taken care of in, 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 in rules that you say. And if this uh, tribe applies inside an organization, of course, there's everybody has a contract, and there's no. If there, if it works here, and you have like a, a list of pre uh, selected freelancers, yeah, you also have some kind of way of dealing with it. <coughs> so, so you have that organization, you just have like groups of everyone working together, like you know, like a yeah. more like a swarm organization. Yeah. You've got issues of contracting and. Uh, 
Yeah, of course. Um, but it's up to the, the individuals themselves how they arrange it. If they want to arrange it from an organization, they form an organization together. If they want to do it as individuals, and it's up to the organizations that give us the assignments and to set out the rules how you want to do it. It's not to, to us as a platform. We just match people together. And it's up to them how they start organizing it. So currently we, do, we don't have uh, issues there. No. It is an interesting field though, uh, because we're also thinking about adding crowdfunding to the platform. And if you have a group of freelancers and there's crowdfunding coming in and, uh, from, from different places, uh, yeah, who's going to pay the BTW? Um, <laughs> yeah. So there will be those kind of problems somewhere around the corner when we start moving also adding the financial stuff to the platform. But currently we don't have it yet. It's uh, um, yeah, it, the, the tax office is also uh, looking at this, uh, how we're going to deal with this freelance. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's a new economy coming up, and a uh, geek economy. Uh, and there is, a, there is a little level where you can just earn money without even giving it up to the tax. And then there's the, the money that you can use as, as a freelance, uh, free, a free employed, able So there is there's rules, but those rules are still old in this new uh, economy. Who of you is going to have a job when you're finished? <laughs> yeah, really, I am planning to work for a big firm or a big or something like that. Yeah, you want to take over No, I, I usually, uh, uh, quite often, I, I talk to students. And then uh, uh, they say, everybody, I want to have this job, and uh, why are you doing this study? Because I can get this great job. What I'm facing is an economy, and there's people having a job, and there's people without having a job. And um, I say uh, it's much safer if you look at the future, when their organization just keep on smaller mm -hmm. all the time. I don't think we're in a temporary financial crisis. I think this is the new uh, reality. And I think uh, uh, all these type of large organizations, they will just keep on shrimping. So there will be less jobs uh, in the future, also because, of course, of this uh, technology uh, coming in. But there will be lots of more uh, freelance uh, jobs if you know your, uh, your talents. So I would say start preparing uh, uh, also for this, for this freelance world. Start knowing your own added value and your, your own business model and, um, as an individual. And then think if if that fits fits into a job, well, it's perfect, fine, uh, and you can earn a lot there. Uh, but also start preparing yourself, also mentally, uh, to work as a as a freelancer. I think it's an awesome idea because uh, um, I see it's two types of people. There's people working because they need the money, and there's people working because they like what they're doing. And I like to work with people that like what they're doing because you can uh, talk on what we're doing instead of people that like to work with people that work for the money first because they don't care what they're doing. They just care about how they can they get more uh, more work. And those people uh, keep the work for themselves. They don't start sharing the work. And in my view, it's much better if you keep share, start sharing your work. So all of you can do the stuff that you don't like, you can start working together and create something better together, and in the end it will end you up with more jobs because people like you. Uh, but that's old economy versus new economy. And I see this two kind of, yeah, it's, it's a collision often. There's in every organization people doing a job because you can, you can probably uh, uh, feel it. Which of the teachers do the job because they need the money? And which of the teachers do the job because they love teaching and they would even do it if they wouldn't get the money? You can probably feel it, you can see it right away. If you see, if you look at somebody one minute, how he's doing a job. And most of, uh, 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 which teachers are better. And if we have a basic income, people can just choose to do, to, to do whatever they like because they don't have to worry about money. I, I think that will yeah, draw in space for lots of new opportunities.
really yeah, nice experience. Yeah. Model so this, yeah. this is the why. Okay. Thank you. Talk to us. Thanks. I would uh, um, connect uh, because in this freelance world and also for your job, it's really important to have a, a very good LinkedIn profile and maybe even other uh, social media. I'm using all of them and I'm uh, welcoming you as uh, uh, connections because you never know when in the future you need each other uh, to get an introduction to some uh, organization or uh, it's always good to broaden your network. So I'm inviting you to uh, send me uh, connections and uh, yeah. Broadly network. I do have a whole Yeah. Does it work? Does it still work? Or is it a whole Your old track? Yeah, old track, yes. From your project? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they've been started over three or four hundred tribes on the platform, so I don't know which tribes work or uh, wouldn't work. I didn't see anything. No. No. Probably, yeah. Okay, five minutes break. Coffee. My contact details are on the side, so uh, if you need me, uh, call me and uh, <coughs> you can just find them.